Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, welcome to another episode of Mark and Mitch make a Scientology film. Let's get Mitch in here. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mitch. Um, um, I just got to say, I'm still green with envy over your countdown. Because it's oh, like, I, actually, that, it's, you know, you it's had, the best. You had uh, somebody on yesterday, and he's the guy who made that. That yeah, was Jeff, Jeff Levin. Levin. Yeah, uh, very made talented that guy. For me. I, we were... Uh, yeah. I needed a transition or something for a podcast and he was like well here here's a whole bunch of things and then i he gave me a like a minute long uh yeah. intro file and i was like oh i'm gonna use that i like that That's nice. yeah he has a massive library of m music that he owns the copyright to so that it's his music it's amazing he's a great resource so what are we up to today we're doing a special i'm kind of nervous about this one mark <laughs> we're doing a special episode today guys we are doing the uh, uh we're doing a special music video edition we were doing a uh, uh mark and mitch make a scientology film episode the other day and um and in the course of talking about that film mitch brought up that he had directed this music video for scientology and i went and looked it up and i was like <laughs> oh that's definitely the next video we're doing yeah. no matter what we're doing that because i cannot pass this up yeah, I had shown this in in, in relation when uh, when I confirmed uh, Norman Starkey's passing, I had uh, shown this, but I didn't really give it proper context. I'm, uh, uh, you know, Norman, who was a, a former ship captain on the Apollo for under L. Ron Hubbard, and was one of uh, one of the people that David Miscavige uh, uh, made a hobby out of torturing and locking up. Uh, he was kind of the producer. Of, of this video for on the client side like on the Scientology side okay because he was representing author <clears throat> services yeah he was at that time the trustee of author services which is this very secretive organization which out it fronts itself as being a literary agency but it only has one client which is L. Ron Hubbard yeah. so it is the literary agency for all of his fiction works which would include his, you know, dime novels and his, you know, epic science fiction works. So yeah, they're the ones that don't know that, but it's, but really, they're part of the corporate uh, financial instrument that is meant to guard uh, and protect all of Scientology's assets. Yeah. And, and today, this organization is a real seat of power in Scientology. You, well, you, well you, that's well, yeah. You say yeah. that David Miscavige, before he was chairman of the board Religious Technology Center, he was chairman of the board Author Services. Mm -hmm. So he that's where he put the pieces together to do the right. whole Scientology. Yeah, this was his his platform, his launching <laughs> his launch pad. It to was power. one hundred percent where yeah. he where he kind of wrangled the power from L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, I, I want to even say before Hubbard was even had passed away. Um, because he was putting all this into place right. while Hubbard was still around. He was just not, right. he wasn't really active, uh, active in the day-to-day. -day well, yeah. And his, all of his puppies weren't barking. So <laughs> his, all of his puppies weren't barking. Yeah, they were not because he was, you know, he was losing. He was his... in a very bad place yeah. uh, mentally at that time. Um, but, um, yes, he, um, so David Miscavige was the chairman of the board, um, author services. Right. And author services, I also want to say they 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 um, they manage and sort of uh, oversee the production and the and the um, and the distribution of all those fiction books that you said. But they also get yeah. a cut from all of the Scientology stuff when they sell a course or if they sell any L. Ron Hubbard Scientology um, books. ASI gets a cut from anyone who sells those. Any organization has to pay. I want to say they're royalty payments that they have right. to pay to um, ASI. So that's right. a, another way Scientology kind of funnels. When so, when you give Scientology a dollar, right. they've figured out how to spend the entire dollar of that. And it's all mathematically calculated. So this much goes to RTC and this much goes to management and this much right. goes to ASI and this much goes to CST. And that dollar, the second they get that dollar, it's already spent by all those people. Yeah. Now, another interesting thing that I just, I, we might want to point out is uh, 
Author Services is not staffed by Sea Org members. It's staff, well, it's staffed by Sea Org members who claim to not be in the Sea Org. Yes, they because, are paid minimum wage because right. a, um, Author Services is a for profit organization. Right. So right. they can't be volunteers of a for profit right. uh, organization. So yeah, it's not a religious organization. Yeah, it is a, I guess, it, when I worked at ABLE, uh, which is the Association for Better Living and Education, which uh, ironically now is ne is the next door neighbor of where the ASI location is. And we're right. going to show that in a minute here. Um, right. But um, the uh, 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 ABLE also was one of those organizations that um, before they got tax exemption, we were paid minimum wage at ABLE. So we would make like $300 a week instead of $44 a week like everybody else made. But we had to pay for our room and we had to pay for our food out of the money that we got. But that was, I mean, we were making a thousand bucks a month. And the ASI guys, they, when, when the Scientology got tax exempt uh, ex status approved, ABLE became a nonprofit officially. And so everyone there became Sea Org members getting paid Sea right, pay. Right, right, But right. ASI and a few other places, they just kept it um, that way forever. And so those guys, uh, they're I mean, basically if you're getting paid minimum wage in the Sea Org, you're you're banking about between five hundred to a thousand dollars a week that you're not having to spend. Right. So right. you can actually save up a, a bit of money. And actually, even when I was at Able, I wasn't there for that long. Not even I don't even think a year or maybe just around under a year. Um, and that um, that paycheck that I was getting at Able was how I survived at gold for three years because wow. I had saved up thousands wow. of dollars at Able because <laughs> we didn't so, get paid at gold. And we There was a lot of months yeah. and weeks where you just didn't get paid at Golden Air Productions. So. Yeah. So you were working down the street at Able. Yes, this I was is, working is, at uh, on, right on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, and then I was doing this thing out of ASI. Yeah. And then a few months later, uh, uh, not that long after that, I went to gold, and then right after that, you went to gold. Yeah, so, so we were right. We were next door neighbors while you were doing this. I was yeah. just um, trying to uh, balance the books over at the Association for right. Better Living and Education right. while you were that, shooting music videos. Yeah, I have a picture of the new Able, which is next door. Oh, yeah, let's put that yeah. up. Here, yeah, this see. is Hope. just so you know. This is ne this used to be the headquarters of the Screen Actors Guild, and this building was purchased by Scientology. Yeah. Uh, and you can see right there, there's a sign. There's two signs. There's Sycamore, which is the main lit sign. And then in the shadows, there's the one that says Hollywood. And I wanted to um, I wanted to show you guys a map of this, because if you go to right now, the test center is a big deal. Um, the Hollywood um test center in um, yeah the Los TikTok Angeles. crew is like shut it down yeah um, and that is right here this is the Scientology uh, here let me see if there's a better I know I have a better view of this there we go that's that's, that's pretty good better but there's a better one even than that but um, there it is okay so that is the Hollywood test center this is where all these TikTokers have been showing up on Hollywood Boulevard and um, and this is the Hollywood Test Center is on Hollywood Boulevard. This building um, is now, we call it the Test Center. For the longest time, it was just called the HI because it used to be a Holiday Inn. When Scientology bought it, it had been a Holiday Inn. And that big Scientology sign said Holiday Inn before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so when Scientology bought it, um, they put a Scientology sign here, but no one ever changed from calling it the HI. And yeah. the the HI, the this for almost all of the years that I was in the Sea Organization, this was what we called Sea Org birthing for people right. that worked at all these different Scientology properties mm -hmm. along Hollywood. So you had um, staff uh, Sea Org members that worked at Celebrity Center, which is a Sea Org base, mm -hmm. um, ASI. Um, HGB, these various Sea Org places, those people had to live somewhere. And this is the, so basically where the white floors are, that is where they do testing and they show videos and nonsense like that. And they have like places where people can come in and do OCA tests and personality tests. And all of the brick 
exterior. Those are all rooms where Sea Org members live all the way up. I mean, that's how it has been. I don't know what it is today, um, if that's still correct. Uh, so well, it was that way when I, it was when I left there, and that was yeah. You know, okay, now just so you can something. see where some of this other stuff is in relation. Well, before you leave there, I just want to yeah. point out one thing, that if you yeah. step outside Author Services, if you step on Hollywood Boulevard and you look east, you see this sign. Yes, so it's very this is, close. It, this is one of Miscavige's two main offices in Los Angeles. This is happening just down the street. Like, he can see this from yeah. the window of his office. He can look down well, there Well, I'll go to it, this. and then we'll show, I'll show you. So... This is the test center. This is where ASI is. So it's just literally a few blocks down the street. Yeah. So you can see it's it's that same picture we showed earlier. That's a that's a what it looks like from you know, Google. From Google, yeah, from a satellite. <laughs> if you go just down one block, this is where there's the Roosevelt Hotel across the street, and then right there is the Man's Chinese. So this is the uh, Chinese theater right there, right. where it says Hollywood Boulevard stuff. Uh, that's where the Hard Rock Cafe is. This is where they have these, uh, you know, the Kodak the, Theater, the Emmys is this Kodak Theater right here on this, uh, this big building right here. That's Kodak Theater. So that's where they have these, uh, you know, uh, award shows. And yeah. You don't have to, stuff. you don't have to come to Hollywood and take one of those tours that everybody does. Mark and I will just do it for you right here. Yeah. This is where they shoot Jimmy Kimmel across the street. There's the Disney, um, I can't remember. El Capitan. El Capitan. Yeah. And uh, they shoot Jimmy Kimmel right over there, um, right next door. There's Hollywood um, High. There's the football field at Hollywood High where I went to high school for a year. Yeah. And there's a uh, Jurassic uh, Park uh, billboard there. Um, and, here we go. There's, so there's uh, there it the is. There it is. I can right see there. it. There it is right there. See? That's right yep. where all the action's happening on all the TikTok uh, yeah. people showing up and Lara FM and all those guys. And then this is... Man's Chinese right over here. If you can, right. I don't know if you can see my mouse, probably not. Um, and then just as long as, cause we're doing it. Um, this is, yeah, this is like a map of, 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 of uh, the Scientology Hollywood Boulevard empire. I mean, it, they yeah. have some amazing real estate on Hollywood. And so just a couple Road. blocks down the street, you've got this building right here <clears throat> is the, it's called the HGB or the Hollywood guarantee building. Oh, let me do it from the sign. Sorry, I, mean, I didn't plan to show this one, but as long as we're right here, so this is um, this is where Able uh, Able International was located, and then right across the street here, um, uh, just right across Ivar, this building is where the International Landlord was. Right. This. Um, uh, kind it's of too bad you can't get a shot of it, building. but right on the on the curve part of it, on the second story, there's a big Sea yeah. Org symbol. Oh yeah, I can get that. Look at that right there. Yeah, can you see that? Oh, no, you can see. Is it, I, I wonder if it's in this oh, no. shot. <laughs> it's it is right there on the corner. It's right yeah. on the corner, right up in above that window. There's a Sea Org. Uh, yeah, I can, it's I, it's kind of spooky. It's not because there's nothing there, on there but a gigantic Sea Org insignia. Yeah, and that really that building used to be. I think it was a mess hall, and then they wanted it to make it a landlord office. It's been a bunch of different things. But, it's the um, landlord office today. Yeah, you can see there is the sign on the side of the building. Curious. Um, That's kind of like uh, the, uh, <laughs> you can get in, but you can't get out. What was that? <laughs> okay, then it's like like the Roach Motel. Yes. Okay, so then this just a, a couple blocks from there. This is the Celebrity Center. So this is where. Um, you have all the celebrities in Hollywood, the, in Los Angeles. This is where right. they go and take their courses. And then right across the street here in this building that's right next to the freeway, um, this building in the center of the screamer, that's right. the Shangri Lodge where I used to live and grew up <laughs> at, um, right across the street from CC. Right. Um, and then if you go just a couple more blocks down um, the street, you get to what's called the complex. So when there have been some of these TikTokers have been to the complex as well. But so this is the Scientology, this big blue building here. That is all that that you see there in that big blue building. Those are um, birthing, Sea Org birthing, mostly. Right. 
almost all of those places. I think they're right. in the very <clears throat> bottom floor um, that's underneath this whole structure. They might have some offices, but for the most part. Yeah, and this is where there are a number of elderly people who are being housed and being uh, exploited. Yeah, this is this almost, uh, well, all the people that live in this building are Sea Org members. And then right. this whole block, the the tie, this cobblestone street, that's L. Ron Hubbard Way in the middle of these two clusters of buildings and then if you just go like this a little bit up here we go then you can see this is um this whole block in the center that is all scientology properties every single thing on that whole block is scientology right. and then the lower half of this block is scientology so pretty much where right where these buildings are this is all scientology i don't know right. about this one big uh, one in the center of the screen now. I don't know if that if they own that one, but they do own these all these ones below it. And then just down the street from that is Scientology Media Productions, literally just like four blocks away. And this yeah, and is, this is this is uh, da David Miscavige's main office. Yeah, so this is his current C organization base. This yeah, is this, where this is the, he the current seat. Of, yeah, this is the seat of power. Of, of Scientology today. This is where it's run out of. This is part of the oligarchy, the Miscavige oligarchy. And, um, and this whole complex, I mean, if you go up here, this whole complex is Scientology. This basically that whole... Um, yeah, it's like a big triangle. Yeah, that whole... Yeah, it used thing. to be KCET KCET Studios. Uh, some of the buildings date back to 1918. It was one of, it was actually the oldest motion picture studio in Los Angeles. And then it changed hands a number of times. It got built on, built on, built on. Now, if you look at the large parking structure, yeah, um, there's never more than uh, the first floor of the parking structure is storage for yeah. events, yeah. and then the rest of it is there's maybe five cars. You know, because that's so funny because if nobody you go that works complex. This, there's, yes. there's, they have, they have at least. Yeah, they have one really big parking structure and a giant right. parking lot. Never yeah. full. Never yeah. full. Well, this one's yeah. a Sea Org facility, so it's even a better reason. Yeah, just there's just nothing in there. I mean, it's like, I, I used to, like, anyway. They should tear that down and put something They else should turn it into a skateboard park. Yeah, that, it probably is that right now. Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, but, yeah, so that's uh, Scientology. Now, let me see if I can go just to so, show Hollywood. Yeah, that's their, their LA empire. Oh, yeah, so you can see there. And this is not all of their properties, but these are, like, there's a bunch of other birthing buildings that I didn't cover. Um, that's just a It's just an apartment building. Yeah. Uh, but there's probably six, uh, at least six of those that I didn't even um, write. Oh, and yeah. uh, before I finish, we do have to show Dave's secret birthing. So oh yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. So when I showed you ASI, yeah, this is this is a shout out to the process servers that are trying to hunt him down. He yeah, spends so, most of his time in LA, and he lives at the El Cadiz apartments on Sycamore yeah. so behind here's ASI. A, here's ASI. If you go up, um, oh, the uh, there you go. If you go up here, next door to ASI is El Cadiz right here. And this is where they shot the TV show Alias. Any Jennifer Garner fans out there? Yeah, um, that was her, I think her apartment. Sydney's apartment in Alias. Yeah. Um, I've never seen the show, but uh, but I'm a big Jennifer Garner fan. Um, but anyway, the um, this is this whole complex here is David Miscavige's secret compound. Yeah, they bought that for him. And then yeah. they tore out a bunch of walls. This whole made, like, thing is David Miscavigeville. This whole I, little yeah, thing. I, but I, I think some of the other executives, ASI, yeah, ASI, yeah, they live, live there. there. But, but other than that, it's Dave, and and whatever they have is the bare minimum, and whatever Dave has is the absolute oh, yeah. maximum. And there Massive. even is a little. I don't think you. I maybe you can see it in the between. So this is ASI. This building right here. That's Authored Services. Another empty parking garage, and then they built a tunnel that goes through um, this park parking garage into this building, this center it built. So David Miscavige, once he's in this thing, he never even has to go outside. Um, Claire's saying that uh, we got some some little BT, audio BTs in here. Do you hear? I don't hear any audio BTs. Yeah, I'm hearing like some static. I don't think, here, let me mute myself and see if it's static. Me. Cutting out the static on channel Z. Um, okay, there we go. How's it now? Um, 
Sorry about that, guys. We've been having a lot of audio BTs. Yeah. I want to say it's Mitch, but... Um, well, it, you know, one of my viewers posted yesterday, blame yeah. Mitch. So that's kind of like, when in doubt, blame Mitch. It's just a thing. Yeah, but the other thing yeah. is that it might be my audio BTs, but they're only excited or they only get stirred yeah, up when yeah. Mitch is on. So that yeah. it could be that too. I don't know. These guys yeah. are very unpredictable. Yeah, get your alien souls. Get, get your alien cooties away from me, Mark. <laughs> I do um, not want your alien. Cooties. And also, whenever we talk about very sensitive subjects, that's when oh, yeah. the BTs come. Yeah. So we just started talking about David Miscavige Apartments, and then all of a sudden, the, the audio BTs show up. Um, anyway, but here is um, so there is David Miscavige's secret compound. This is ASI. You saw where everything else is. So this is kind of just giving you a an overview of all these things because we're going to talk about this cry out video and it was done by authored services and there's a whole bunch of stuff happening at this test center down the street so we figured we'd just give you a little a bird's eye view of everything um yeah it's it, yeah it, it the test center is just not some isolated area yeah. it's right smack dab in the middle of hey who's that it's, <laughs> it's, Mitch when it's, he was it's this cry out video it's smack dab in the middle um Okay, now it's going to be roast, Mitch. I can take it. I got broad shoulders. Well, I just wanted it before we went. No, it's on. okay. Is that a camel cigarettes hat? Yeah, that's a camel cigarette hat. Actually, I used to work out of this gym. Yeah. The, if you remember the camel man. Yeah. He was just tall. Him. Like camel, I had, what did they call them? Bucks? Camel bucks? Or uh, yeah, that guy. He he had like a like a he had like a blonde, you know, Jufro kind of thing. And he was I don't remember. Really cool was. guy. And we used to work out. I used to work out with him. And he would always give me like camel swag and shit. It okay, was, okay. Yeah, this well, funky little chip. That's a whole other video. We're not going to do that now. Yeah. But yeah, that that's a camel head. I actually smoked back then, and I worked out. Now I don't smoke or work out, so go <laughs> figure. So. Well, the reason I also wanted to show this is because I wanted, yeah. uh, to be fair, there is somebody wearing a pair of like stonewashed gray guest jeans in the background of Mitch. Okay. So that sort of Oh my sets, god. I that sort of sets oh the Oh my scene god, look at that. For what era we were in. And so um <laughs> there is cringe in this video. Okay. And yeah, this no, is not I mean this like one of the reasons why we wanted to establish sorry Mark, I just gotta say this one thing. Yeah. We wanted to establish, you know, this the, yeah, I mean this video was an excuse to show all this stuff. But keep in mind this place ASI, author services that we're talking about, this is the organization that brought you Battlefield Earth, you know, the movie Battlefield yep. Earth. That's right. So it's that's kinda true. hard to work for them without yeah. doing something cringy because that's just kind of what you're being paid to do that's right and i remember this was a little bit of a uh, kind of a, a problem in scientology is we needed to do they needed to do like a secret video of john travolta that could go on the battlefield earth dvd like behind the scenes stuff right and they didn't want to just hire any video crew because they're pretty sure that that would leak out that they did this so golden era productions shot this video this behind the scenes dvd reel and we shot a whole bunch of footage when they were doing makeup tests and stuff with mm -hmm. john travolta and we did all of that at asi that's where we produced oh wow yeah yeah there video. you go uh, so yeah, asi I've... is also where they meet with the when hollywood when david miscavige wants to schmooze anybody or they want to get in good with anybody that they're going to do that at asi that's oh, where yeah. the that, that place... LAPD are going to go to. That's where oh, the yeah. councilman or the mayor or any of those muckety mucks or other spokes holes of other places meeting yeah. with Scientology yeah. spokes holes. They have their little conventions and get ups. They do all that yeah. at ASI. Yeah, I mean, ASI may be the most powerful organization in all of Scientology. And Miscavige does run it, it is completely under his control. Well, I was going to tell you that RTC. ASI and CST all have the ability to um, take out the other organization. Right. So if somebody at CST wants to rise to power, they can take out RTC or take out um, ASI um, or CSI. But if you have control of all of them, then it doesn't matter which one you're, yeah, exactly. you're the head and of. Da you, Dave you, does. So Dave has all the ASI people because yeah. he used to be COB ASI. He has all the CST people because the people that he picked to be at CST were his people that he put there. Yeah, so everybody else. The, and the others he, put a, he threw in the hole. Yeah. And, today, and, and today they're just like 
yes sir no sir yeah exactly so it's, it's pretty all good. sad okay so now we're going to show you this video right or do we want to talk we so we i think we said it uh, we so to be fair this well, was going to be a reaction video and mitch was going to say how they shot it and who's we're going to say who's in it because we know every single person pretty much in this thing um but um do you want to say anything else before we play the video? Because we're going to start and stop it a million times. Um, yeah. Do I want to say anything else about the video? Um, well, okay. Yeah. A couple of things. Yeah. I just, I okay. want to say this video was actually completely produced, made by people outside the church. I mean, I was a Scientologist. I brought a guy in who uh, still works at Gold. He's OT8 Pro, somebody I brought in who happens to be the person who does all the hate videos, in case you're wondering who that is. Uh, oh, good. Morgan, it's Randy Stitt, in case you want to know. Yeah. He, do, he does all the hate videos and all the CCHR, all the really just smelly stuff for the church. Because Randy do does those. Stuff. Yeah, Randy does and all of And wasn't Randy that. like second unit on Star Wars? No, 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 he never, worked, he never worked on Star Wars. That was a guy, I don't want to even want to get into it. I can't think of his name, but. Oh, was it Randy uh, Stith? No, 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 it wasn't Randy. That's his name. But oh. the guy, there's another guy who worked on on, uh, on a special effects unit in L.A. for Star Wars, and he made that his big claim to fame. Oh, okay. But he was actually fired from Star Wars. He oh, only okay. worked on it for I a thought that was also Randy's claim to fame. No, no, he Randy's had, claim to fame is he, he was an AD on a bunch of really good music videos for Randy Newman. Oh, like okay. I, I love LA and blah blah blah. Okay. There was a couple of Scientologists that worked on that. I mean, he worked with uh, what's her name, uh, Mark Isham's wife. Uh, there was, you know, she who was a costumer. So there, and and so Not I knew Randy a, Sith guys. So everybody's think he think he's one of the Sith lords from Star no, Wars. No, 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 no he's it's Randy Stith. Stith. Yeah, Not these Randy are these Sith. are. That's a totally yeah. different Sith lord. This but is he, a Scientology lord, Randy yeah, he, Stith. He plus he doesn't have those like Je Jedi mind powers at all. He doesn't. No, he he's he he's might have a, some fuddy duddy powers that. that yeah, he's uh, got fuddy duddy powers, <laughs> but that's a whole nother story. But in case anybody's wondering who does the hate videos, yeah. his name is Randy Sith. You can probably find him on uh, on uh, you can probably find him on Facebook. Yeah, don't let's not let's not. Hey, if anybody's out there that thinks that's like a, a license to go and give hate on Randy, that's not what we're doing. We're Whatever hate Randy's going to get or whatever uh, chirping is going to get done in Randy, it's going to be as a result of his product right here. That's what we're going to talk about. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I'm not saying go after Randy. I mean, Randy's actually, yeah. he's actually a really nice guy. He's just lost in the maze. Yeah. He's, 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 he's not he's, an abusive guy. He thinks it's the right thing to be doing these videos. That's what all videos. the Scientologists think. They think, they literally think that yeah. we are crazy. Um, Psychotic. They think that we're <laughs> sacrificing our future eternity for all mankind's yeah. future eternities. They think that we're right. threatening that by exposing Scientology as a fraud. They do not think it's a fraud. They think it's going to save the planet and the universe. Yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. Why anyway, the, that's yeah. the reason this video was done because this is going to save the universe. Oh yeah, totally. Can... So I yeah I should say okay. So this was yeah. there was an album called Mission Earth, right? A Mission Earth album. Uh, it's notable a music album. Yeah, music album, an actual not, LP. No, not a, it was not a sound, not a um, a soundtrack per no, se. No, you could probably find a picture of it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's an actual. It was uh, probably the lead. Um, a musician on there was Edgar Winter, who yes. was a Scientologist and a very good musician. And um, and L. Ron Hubbard wrote every single song on the, yeah, on the and, album. And, and, yeah, it was and, just and, arranging, and some of the music was. Uh, tweaked by Edgar Winter, but but the music, yeah, like the yeah. the the song and the lyrics, and even maybe in a lot of cases how the what kind of beat or if it would be a fast song or a yeah. slow song, that was all um, recorded by L. Ron Hubbard and played on an organ and said, "This is yes, the music is, and these are the lyrics." Oh, it's horrible. But I yeah. should say that you know Hubbard left zero. Uh, he he left zero plans on what was to happen to Scientology after he died. He said no plans whatsoever. He just tried to set up so no one person could take it over. He didn't want anybody else to be famous from it yeah. or wealthy. But he did leave unbelievable detailed plans, unbelievably detailed plans for how to make this album. So yeah. that's what, what he was more concerned with. This particular song is called A Cry Out, and it's meant to be an anthem 
uh, a plea to protect the environment. Yes. So it ha it, it, the underpinning message is, the, is environmental. And so when I was asked to work on it, I was asked to go to all kinds of some meetings with environmental lobbyists and law firms that invented that that represented uh, groups like Earth Day and stuff like that. They were trying to form a partnership and get this song adopted as the anthem of the yes. environmental movement. Okay, nobody was interested because they couldn't even get a release on a major record label. It came out on Rhino. I don't yeah, know if you guys know it... Rhino Records, but they're like a specialty you know, the, you know, they're they're like especially a label that puts out what what are called cutouts or reprints or, yeah. you know, they'll they'll do like an album of uh, oldies and stuff like that. So the, this thing came out on Rhino Records so. back in the day. This is um yeah, this and is this is 1989. Yeah, this I is like 80, yeah, 89. This is like 89. Okay, when, when and this played. This. I mean, this is somebody played this was played on mtv2 or something like that this was yeah i don't know where of, the whole thing i don't know where the whole thing off of tv this is we we lucked out on the format because this is so old that it's what's called standard def and it's yeah this is when tvs were square yeah three by yeah, four by three you... uh, aspect ratio <laughs> um okay oh wait wait a minute mark Fis mark fisher has a note here he says yeah. dr demento records I thought it was Rhino. I think actually Mark. No, it was. It is. It is Rhino. Yeah, I it's maybe Doctor. Oh yeah, that was it's maybe the say same. It in the when I play the video. Yeah, and and um, I I think Mark might have had something to do with producing the album. He's told. Uh, yeah, I'm not we really should do sure, it. We should probably at some point we're going to have to do a, a Battlefield Earth video and a Mission yeah, Earth. Yeah. There's going to have to be things because there's so many um, stories around all those things. So okay, without further ado we're going to play this thing and again oh, we're going to start oh, damn stop. hey we're listen gonna... and if you want to if you want to if yes it looks very dated but please go look at other music videos from 1989 <laughs> bef before you throw too much uh shade my way yes and also before we start i i can already tell I and mean, i haven't watched this whole thing through all the way because again i like to watch these with you guys yeah i yeah, just yeah. watched a, a little bit of it and i was like uh -oh. oh mitch and i got to do a thing yeah. but as soon as i started watching this video <clears throat> mitch in the technic technic Scientology technical training films that we shot, yeah. I'm going to tell yeah. you we shot time lapse clouds on so yeah. many occasions. Yeah, on this one film, mofo loves yeah. him some time lapse. That's clouds. me. <laughs> yeah, I'm the guy that pretty much invented time lapse clouds in film. We also so, did those milk, those giant water tanks with the milk. Yeah, we put the milk in yeah. it and make a billowy. Cl yeah, cloud tanks. Clouds yeah, cloud, cloud tanks. tanks. We did that. Oh but you know, once I God. I even got them to spring for eight thousand dollars for a four hour shoot in a Learjet. Yes. Uh, so we could go up there. There's a there's a camera system. Uh, there's three cameras. There are periscope cameras that you operate from inside a Learjet. And a guy named Clay Lacey, who's the most famous. He's not alive anymore. But after Chuck Yeager, who's the world's most famous aviator ever, like Clay Lacey and Chuck Yeager were like friends. Yeah, did Clay we Lacey, use that? Was that for the solo film that we? Yeah, Astro, and it was. It's called Astrovision. This yeah. pilot, he had won. He had won in his lifetime the Reno Air Races more than any other pilot. This guy, and he and he'd been a colonel in the Air Force, so he was insanely well respected. And we we flew with him and and shot yeah. clouds, so it was like. <laughs> but yeah, that was back in the early days when they would let me spend money on anything. Yes. Because okay. we'd get we'd get good stuff. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, here we go, guys. Make sure we can hear. Everybody can hear too. Yeah. There's me clouds. See, this is supposed to represent a nice pristine environment. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Let's just Edgar. Yeah, Rhino Records. Records. There you go. Mission Earth, Rhino yeah. Records. Okay. And if yeah. it's if it's, I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. bit. The word, the 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 chorus just goes over and over again. So you, once we do get one through one of them, we can maybe yeah. talk. Plus, over this them. video is on YouTube, so if you really want to watch it again, we'll put a link to it. Yeah. Yeah, you can just super duper visual effects for that time period. Yeah. Making an, an, an apple fall into a kid's oh, head. Oh, and look, it's rotten. Oh, oh my God. Rotten. What have we done to the earth? Yeah, and now that's uh, you don't know it, but I'm gonna give you guys a little. Spoiler, that's yeah. Edgar Winner. Well, it's actually not. Well, hold on. It's, it's supposed actually a, to be. Yeah, that's a stand-in <laughs> because Edgar, that's actually Michael Wiseman. 
You knew it him. really is Michael. Wiseman. That is Michael. That was his first acting job for the church was his feet. Wow. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So because Edgar Winter has like a skin condition, so he is very sensitive to sunlight. Well, he's so he's al he suffers from al yeah, albinism. I think you call I don't it. know what it's called, but it's called has, albinism. If yeah, you're an albino, a, it's an albinism. Him yeah, and his brother I, were both born that way. And um, yeah, he's um, he's actually legally blind as well. I, we've done a ton of stuff. With yeah, him, right? yeah, but I mean, we had to like keep him in a trailer where we had aluminum foil on the windows, and uh, he incredibly nice guy. And then when we shot with him, eventually on camera, it, we were in shadow. I prefer to shoot in shadow anyway, because I don't really. You can see I don't like sunlight. I mean, look where I'm, <laughs> look where I have. Fort I'm in a, in yeah, I'm in a <laughs> fort, fort under a bed. <laughs> so. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, that, yeah, this is supposed to be Edgar Winter. Yeah. Okay. And then if we, if there's people that, if there's um, special guests, as I'll yeah, call there them, are a few. We're gonna pause and we're gonna call them out too. Yeah. We can rock out too. And oh, and we also, by the way, in all the years that I shot with Mitch, we shot downtown Los Angeles. We covered that city that grid of streets more than any other streets in the insane. world we insane. shot up them up those streets down the streets across the streets we shot we blanketed um los angeles and one of the things that we would do is we would just set up a camera and we'd just shoot down the street it's not illegal no you you can get walking what, down yeah the you can get what's called a grid permit yeah and a grid permit will be for a grid of blocks and you are allowed to shoot on the sidewalk, yeah, you cannot disrupt foot traffic or car traffic. Yeah, and so that's the cheapest permit you could get. So of course that's what gold would get for us, yeah. and then expect us to do things that would absolutely block. Dolly everything. shot in the middle of the uh, intersection. Yeah, <laughs> but we got you, you a that. permit. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but then after a while, we'd hired the same cops so many times. Yeah, that they'd. You know, they, they would were, let us they do were, kind of. They, they were knew, on the payroll. <laughs> they knew what the score was. Yeah. They were like, "Oh, these guys are going to want to do a lot more than walk and talk on the sidewalk." <laughs> yeah, okay. exactly, exactly. Back to the video. It's going to take forever. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold yeah. on. Who's yeah. that? that? Who's is that? Karen That's Karen Black. Karen Black. <laughs> okay, Karen Black. If you guys don't know, she's a very famous actress from the '60s and the '70s. Yeah, she won an Academy. She won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in A Few Easy Pieces, opposite Jack Nicholson. Yeah, and so, uh, she doesn't apparently like the exhaust. And I don't yeah. know why she's pushing a baby cart. <laughs> yeah, she's she's she should not be babysitting. Um, yeah, I went to a few parties at Karen Black's house. She should not be babysitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Seagulls don't like it either. Yeah. Wait yeah. a minute. We're gonna have. Okay. I just want okay. you folks to know. Yeah. I, Were okay. Any keep going. Harmed in the production of this. No. A, no. Was that a? Uh, was that a? Some. That's like a real a, seal. Was, no, that's a real seal. It wasn't a show seal. No. Go on. Well, it was a trained seal. It was just. Well, like, I know that, but it, you guys didn't just happen upon it. No. <laughs> you Can you imagine? We're going to go to the beach and shoot a seal. Can you imagine that poor seal, though? You brought him back to where, like, freedom is like 20 feet from there, and he could just swim away. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's a bummer. That's kind yeah. of, a, that's a dick move. It's yes, kind of like being in the Sea Org and working yeah, in LA. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. Like, freedom is 20 feet from here, but you right. can't go. I didn't know. Trouble. I don't know that because I wasn't in the Sea Org, but I observed that. Okay. okay. But either way, this was a show. This is a picture. Yeah, this is a show, show poem. Show seal. Yeah, a picture animal, as we call it. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Picture seal. That's right. Picture seal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, dude. Let's use the right term. No nomenclature. Yeah. And also, he got right out. Oh, come on. At least give me a fish. Oh, oh no. There's some. Now, this is a. This is a. That's a real. Stop in a second. That, that's okay. a. That's that a real. Because you, you, if you want to. You know, kick over a shell and have a bunch of, you know, stuff. It better be all environmentally safe, or the coastal p patrol is going to slaughter you. So whatever was in there was stuff that fish eat and live okay. on. And then what, what? What about this guy? This is um a f was never alive. It's a it's a what it's would a you call that? Yeah, it's a prop seal. Like it, a it's not even yeah, not even taxidermy. It's completely made out of fake stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's just a. It's just yeah, a stuff, because they, a they, yeah, because the the coastal people, and I don't blame them. They don't even want a taxidermy seal in there. They don't want anything okay. that could potentially be a health risk to anybody or any living thing. So, but okay. look how cute he is. He's like a kid's doll. He's kind of cute. He's just asleep. 
Well, I don't right? think he's supposed to be asleep in the video. No, he's dead. He, he's dead because the, because the, of the pollution. The, because there yeah, was all no, that muck yeah. on that conch shell. Exactly. That's yeah, I just exactly. went back a little because now we can see before pollution, after yeah. pollution. This, all these lyrics, if you can even hear them. Yeah, I wish I would have translated, you know, did subtitles of the lyrics. Yeah, okay, we could have done a bouncing ball. Yeah. One yeah, of these kids. <laughs> Yeah, I could have. You mean I could have subtitled it with a little? Yeah, with a little bouncing before. ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's another video, Mitch. We can yeah. do a sing along. I'm not trying to promote. Yeah, we the should video. do a sing along. No, this is its probe environment. Okay, now there's going to be some Scientology kids that are going to pop up in this. Um, I thought I recognized this guy as a guy that I know of, Damon. I just saw his mom the other night at New Year's. Um, yeah, looks yeah. Just like Damon. But um, do we know, were these any kids that you, this like, no, you these, these people? No, these, or? I had no association with these kids. I don't, okay, so you didn't I don't recognize them. It was just, I need to, I, Yeah, but they're going to gonna be Scientologist kids because they're going to call up people and like, yeah, we need to, you know, we're going to do a, uh, we're going to do a fake uh, baseball thing or something. Yeah. Okay, let me um, flip over. So when I flip over my mic. I just flip. I just flipped over my mic. Did that? Did you tell me if that got rid of the BTS. I literally. Yeah, the never static is gone. out what this thing is. It's just. Uh, I don't know, man. It's really, these BTS have really got me. Uh, got me going. Okay, so we don't know these kids. The baseball field is next to a uh, sewage, a toxic sewage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look, their baseball is in the... And Edgar just happened to be walking right when it hit. Yeah. And he didn't even pick it up. Just walked by his uh, head. You don't want to touch that ball. No. Okay, now this is key because this is at LAX, right? Yeah, this is at the end of the... You don't really need a permit to shoot here. You well, just jump out of your I was just going to say, whenever we needed some really fancy plane shots, there was a place <laughs> that you could go at the end of LAX, and you could just yeah. set up a camera, and yeah. before the security or... The what they called the uh, L.A. the airport police or whoever yeah, the, showed the, up, yeah, you could get a yeah. good bunch of shots off. Yeah, probably not they, anymore after nine eleven. I no, think everything you is can't really like can't get anywhere near yeah. that. Okay, um, okay, back to uh, Michael Wiseman's legs, which we have to say not Edgar. We have to say Michael Wiseman's legs. Yeah, yeah, I think he's wearing my cowboy boots. <laughs> oh really? Is that Venice? Yeah, this is like a... No, you know where that no, no. is? Well, no, that picture... You know the, where that... Yeah, I know but where this, this is, but yeah, where... Oh, shoot, yeah. I might have gone back too far, but I this went to... This is like uh, downtown LA. But there was sand in that last show. That's why I was asking. Oh, look, it's a, a tagger. Oh, my God, yeah, we're now... Look we're, at what he tags. He's not even a good... He didn't even really... And also, that's the... That he threw the can away. Uh, yeah, that's really subtle. But, you know... CFCs, carbofluorocarbon. We, we shot this at the dump. So you oh went my, to a dump. Oh my God! Was I it, think which uh, one? The one in Montebello? Uh, I don't even remember. But a oh. real dump where it's like it, it takes you like a month of showers to get the smell out of oh, your body. Oh yeah, those are good. Like it, it is insane. Those are good location shoots. When you yeah, I think we brought the smoke. Of this shoot like three weeks later, and you go. Oh, that shirt must have been oh, a yeah. shoot. Oh, yeah. We, that I'm was at the dump. That one two yeah. More times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly we've had a few right. Of those. Okay, here yeah. we go. Huh? Oh, there it is. See, there it is. Oh, gosh. Okay, now these kids, I know these kids too. That is um, Prager. Um, I think I want to say her name is not, is it Vanessa Prager or Alexis Prager? It's one of the Prager kids for sure. Yeah, this is, this is, I think, do you remember, Mark? I, I did the kids running through the sprinkler shot. I did that a lot. Yeah, this was another one of Mitch's yeah, shots. That this we is would, another if, one of my go-to. Whenever go -to. somebody was supposed to think of a happy memory, there was going to be some kids either with an animal or jumping around or something at a park on a yeah, swing. Yeah, do, do you remember? Do, you, we did this one music video. I think it might have been We Are the Auditors. I think you were with the crew. We uh, What's her name? Uh, Michelle Stafford. Yeah. She, it was before she was a star. She was just a struggling actress. Yeah. And we took her up to Apple Valley where they have this agricultural area. And you know, like agri an agricultural field has these massive sprinklers, yeah. huge. 
and we paid them to turn on the sprinklers and i had her backlit sunlight yes. dancing in this massive like this beyond sprinklers from hell and it was like i was i i i liked you know it was just the thing i like to do yeah i big, liked water sports i don't know what fan. to say yeah and now they're like what there's a sewer nearby Holy yeah no. i have no idea what we put in the sewer oh my god That's a little much. Yeah, that's supposed what, to be the pesticides. Yeah, we we they wouldn't pay for pop for the plane. No, we did later. Remember, we did shoot a plane. Well, uh, I, I know, but in this one, yeah, in this one, no, and they didn't pop for the plane. Would have been awesome. Yeah, because he's looking up. You don't know. Maybe it just a no, big you don't truck know. drove by. Yeah, you don't know. That was just yeah. kind of stupid. That was a lot. There was a lot. There was a lot insinuated in that. No profiling there. No. Okay, now we're in the swamp. This is in the LA River. You know, the part of the LA River that's actually like has water in it and yeah. land. Are those, are those props or were those there? You no, know, no, those are absolutely props. Yeah, I was going to say, dude, like, no, there's there some were, parts of the river that are like, yeah, these, no, you not big old ducks. <laughs> there's just birds. Yeah, no, these are totally, these, are, these okay. were never ducks. Oof. Jeez, I was wondering. Okay, let's keep going. We're about to get to the crescendo. Nice low angle. Okay, here we go. Watch this. Whoa! Okay, who is this? Now, what kind? Of, now, what girl wears wears heels? I mean, wears high heels and and, and dark stockings in the middle of the day? I'm sorry. Well, also down at the at yeah. the Roach Coach in downtown LA. Yeah, that's like, a where's little, she going? Little trashy. <laughs> She's going over to the Scott Productions. Scott Free Productions is right around yeah. the corner from this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, that that would be Ridley Scott's company. Yes, Ridley and the other Scott. Um, yeah, both had a one. company down there at the time. Yeah. Um, but you don't. This is not a. Do you not know who this is? No, it was an actress that we. I know, we, but I we, thought we, you would know. Like, oh yeah. No, I don't actually know because she was a legitimate extra. That's what I thought. I know that was she was. Yeah, but I don't. I don't know. I mean, you usually don't remember. people that didn't speak, I would usually cast them off a headshot because it's not That's worth true. having a she had the right you. look. Yeah, exactly. And she had the hair. '80s hair. She had the yeah. late '80s hair. You yeah. know, she she wasn't too overly blonde. Yeah. Okay. This oh, is Michael, Michael Fairman. Fairman. Michael yeah. Fairman. There's Michael <laughs> Fairman. Also, we used Michael Fairman in just about every single video that we did. Yeah, um, Michael's a really good actor. And um, and he just got a park bench uh, job for this one. He just had to sit on the bench. That's it. Read the paper. That yeah, was and it. there's going to be we're going to be stomping a lot coming up because there's a lot of yeah. Now Scientologists who would look at these, they'd know all these people, so yes. they would be like, they would and be so like, when ooh, they, ooh, I know that guy. That's I know right. That guy. So when this played at the Scientology, uh, this played at a Scientology event, guaranteed. This was yeah. played at the event, and all the Scientologists know all the celebrity Scientologists, but right. then they might also see some of themselves in here because. If you're in a Scientology shoot, you're not getting paid. So at least yeah. if you could see yourself on a screen one time at an event with a bunch of your friends, that's a good perk. Yeah, plus it looks it looks good on your eligibility when you go to do your OT levels. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now stop. These three. Stop. Okay, Back that up. is from good. left to right. That yeah. is, well, let's go right to left because the okay. last one is a very famous person these days. You've got Jamie Wasserman in the white top. Um, and the all three of these um, women went to, to Delphi with me as a when we went to school, so I know all right. of them very very well. Right, right. Uh, Marissa Rabisi in the middle, actually my first girlfriend, and Angie Veneer slash Leclaire is the last one. She was mm. the Scientology um, case supervisor that uh, supervised Danny Masterson's case, and she was disappeared when um their stuff started to come out about uh his history <laughs> yeah with right other scientology females yeah. oh. she was the one supposedly trying to fix danny yes and uh so yeah hey shout out to jamie marissa rabisi jamie Wa jamie marissa and angie yeah um, so uh, marissa is bonnie rabisi's twin sister that's right right and um and angie was the very first formerly married to beck Oh yeah, Marissa was married. Eventually, right. was married to Beck Hansen of right. uh, musical fame, right. and um, Angie Veneer 
Uh, we said what what um, she was the very first graduate of Delphi, Los Angeles, and her dad is also a declared suppressive person who's written a book. I think it's called it's fair game or something. Um, Meryl Veneer is her dad. He used to work for the Guardian's office, and he has written a book. Yeah, um, there you go. There you go. History everywhere. And Ken Wasserman. I don't know what happened with Ken Wasserman. I think yeah, Ken no, he. I know what happened. I know. Uh, no, not Ken Wasserman. I don't know. He was a, a, a course supervisor in CC when I first got in to Scientology. Ken Wasserman he, was. Yeah, he was one of my uh, course oh, supervisors. Wow. I think he he was supervising the HQS or the wow. HSDC course or something like that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, they're very excited about saying, oh, oh well, uh, Pomerantz, David yeah, the, Pomerantz. This guy has sold more records in the Philippines than yes. anybody in the history of he's the world. He's like, he's, he is like, um, he's like Bono of the Philippines. That is yeah, David Pomerantz. He's huge. When he goes to the Philippines, people lose their minds. Oh my God. But he, he also used to work What did he, he did some musical direction for Barry Manilow. He did yeah, something. He's he had, done a lot of stuff. Yeah. He, yeah. But he definitely had an, uh, this is the 80s, guys. Everybody yeah, this, had 80s stuff going on in the 80s. Yeah, and this guy was like heavy. Uh, he's Jeff is heavy, heavy, heavy. Not Jeff. Uh, David. David Pomerantz. Da I get Jeff a, Pomerantz, is, no yeah. relation, also in this video coming yeah, up. Yeah, different spelling, I have to say. <laughs> yes. One ends with an S, one ends with a Z. But it, this, you know, these are, he's, uh, Jeff, uh, David Pomerantz is one of these very talented musicians that was always kept in a very privileged, siloed, kind of, you know, warm bath Mark of emotional Isham. support. Yeah. These guys. And David they, Campbell. Yeah, they have no idea that they're fronting for. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping that they'd believe me because I knew them. Really yeah. Well, but they, it's sad. But also yeah. their whole families are in and all their yeah. business people and managers. This yeah. Once you've been in Scientology, when you leave, you got to, unless your family are, have already left or are leaving yeah. too, um, it's rough. So David Pomerantz, still in Scientology as far as we know. Um, okay, well, who else? Now we're going to get a bunch of, you know, we, I, probably Jeff will be the next one that shows up. Don't know that guy. Yeah, he's nobody. Oh, yeah. you know what? Hold on. Yeah, there's, there's Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> Did you see the little move with the glasses? Yeah, yeah. he's doing that. That before. Yeah, that's that's the '80s Matlock TV. I was just gonna say yeah. before CSI Miami, there was Jeff Pomerantz. Yeah, um, exactly. That was an '80s thing. Yeah, so that's Jeff Pomerantz, famously from the Crusades, where um, Scientology was being sued or prosecuted by either the Wallersheim case or the Christofferson case. They had these religious freedom marches, and at the front of those marches, it yeah. would be Jeff Pomerantz in a yellow T-shirt that says Scientology minister or some nonsense, um, and that was his um, that was his uh, claim to fame. Yeah, I it, well, his internally his claim to fame was he was one of the most successful IS regents of all time. I mean, you know, this, he's just like he made a ton of money uh, uh, g getting people to donate because you know the even though he's not a staff member, they would get a percentage of all the donations. He made a lot of money, and he was also a recipient recipient of the uh, you know the International Association. Why well, he wrote a religious freedom medal. Yeah, the religious religious freedom dinner plate. Well, depending on who. Well, he didn't get a dinner plate. He yeah, just got no, a little uh, token. He got a coaster. He got he a got Chuck E. Cheese token. Yeah, a toaster. Says, yeah, I exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> but uh, he was one of the very first to get it, though. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely an OG. Okay, here we go. Okay, that is Chick Corea. Yeah, and now notice the sun has started. Excuse me. Notice the sun is starting to go down. The sun is very low. We're going into shadow because we're about to reveal Edgar. That's right. He's coming. We can up. only have him out there for like three minutes or he'll burst into flames. <laughs> yes. So I almost spilled something in here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> oh, that's, that's there the he kid. is. And that's the kid. That was the kid from the baseball field. Just happens to be right. hanging out in right. an alley in downtown right. LA when Edgar walks by. <laughs> It's dramatic yeah. license is what that's called. <laughs> now, what's up with the Little House on the Prairie 
behind Edgar. Right? I don't know. There's some I Mormon s- girl in there. I know. When I was watching this, I'm like, Mitch has fallen down in the costumes, like, oversight. In yeah, this. I don't know who that is. Like, they that... must have showed up like this, and Mitch was, that's another thing they'll do. We no, would I, do to Mitch, know, too. Yeah. We would just show up with a bunch of people, and there's 100 people, and... 75 of them are dressed okay but there's 25 in there that are either yeah. going to be in the back or we're never going to see them because yeah, they absolutely. are dressed hideously yeah but the, i was just hats were kind of big though i don't know who that is though okay yeah, i didn't recognize her There you go. There, there you, you go, go, guys. That was it. That was the uh, uh, cry out, the famous cue, cry out. Cue the clouds. Yeah. Cue more clouds from Mitch. <laughs> um, there you go, I folks. Think, um, I think it it really does say, say it was shot in the 80s. Just yeah. if, if anybody was alive during the 80s, they'd be like, yeah, that checks out. That's that's it, you know. Yeah. Um, so It looks like a double mint commercial. Like at the end of the day. It could have been, we could have sold some spearmint gum. There could have been some twins in there. It could have yeah, been. no, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> one of the most interesting stories that I have to tell about this, this uh, video was shot by a guy named Tom Del Ruth, who's a pretty noted uh, cinematographer. He shot uh, the, the classic Rob Reiner film, Stand By Me, which I think everybody's seen that. And he was he the happened. DP for this. Yeah, he for this. The guy who, who was the director of photography on this wow. thing also shot uh, Stand By Me. He shot, just coincidentally, he shot the, the uh, Lucas Talking movies. The guy shot a lot of stuff. Oh, wow. I, mean, he, I didn't he was know a, that he shot yeah, the he, Look Who's Talking. Well. Yeah, just coincidentally, having nothing to do with Scientology or John yeah, Kirstie, nothing to do with known. any of that. Yeah. God, I just noted my light is really becoming out of a horror film. I need to brighten that up a bit. You need so, to, but I'm, I'm super bright and you're super dark here. You know, I can, uh, I've got a, uh, look, I've got an on the fly cave mode that I can just switch. Oh, to. nice. Um, yeah, let do that. that I feel okay, better good. now. Okay. Yeah. So, but anyway, so Tom, great guy. We we hired him just as a because this this was not like a golden era production in Scientology production. It was like they contacted me and then I put a team together a producer who today uh, works for gold and does all the eight videos the gentleman we were speaking about earlier mm-hmm. the uh, Sith Lord. <clears throat> yeah the yeah, other stith lord <laughs> stith so lord. yeah so anyway so uh keep in mind that norman sturkey was the client representative from author services norman sturkey was trained in cinematography by l ron hubbard Right, he was the original production manager on the first L. Ron Hubbard cine crew, where David Miscavige was like a camera boy, cameraman, whatever. So yeah. all they knew is what I taught them. And I, I told a story the other day, but I'm just going to repeat it. The way that Hubbard taught them to take a light read, which is when you, that's when you measure the amount of light so that you know how how to set your lens for how much light to let in. It's we all know what it is. It's called exposure, and. Uh, Hubbard had this very arcane tubular device from a company that went out of business and they bought the whole company and it's called an SEI meter or it's a certain type of light meter and a guy stands there with a white block of chalk and you aim the meter at the white block of chalk and then you spend it's a real ritual it takes a good five minutes to take a read that way it's not it's not efficient it's not um quick and it is not easy to use. No, and it's it's very accurate, but it's also very not necessary. It's cumbersome. It's, yeah, it's not necessary. I mean, the technology advanced so far beyond this, right? Yeah. And so Tom Del Ruth, having come out of television, he did. He was an Emmy Award winning cinematographer until he'd won. He he and and he was noted for doing pilots. And your pressure on the cinema, on everybody on a pilot is extreme because the producers of the network are going to look at the pilot and that's what they're going to judge to pick up the show. So he learned to be perfect in everything he did. But this is how he did a light read. You know, if you, you know, you set the lights and then he'd go, he'd look at his meter and that was it. Like that's all he needed. And then we'd shoot. 
Norman Starkey, who would come visit the set, he saw this and he freaked out because it was not the way Hubbard had taught him to do it. And I cannot stress this enough when I say these guys are so indoctrinated that once Hubbard teaches them to do something, and the same was true that, that to some degree of what David Miscavige would approve as the way to do it, if there was a better way or even the right way, they wouldn't see it. Yeah. They would be blind to it. They it would not enter their their well, their thinking. But to, just to tell you, so Norman came to me and he's like, "This guy doesn't know what he's doing." First day of shooting, this mm -hmm. guy, he's off source, <laughs> meaning he's not doing it the way Hubbard did it. He uh, and and he's worried because they're spending a ton of money on this thing. Right? And also, I'm, Norman was working with Hubbard in the early 1980s. Oh yeah, I wish I had the picture 70s. of it. So Everybody's like, seen that, that, that picture of Hubbard on the set with the cowboy hat and the, yes. like Norman is there, like he came out of that whole scene. So now yeah. I'm like, oh, now I'm screwed because I got this client from Author Services. He's telling me that this award-winning cinematographer well, because doesn't know. Norman's been trained by yeah, Hubbard. Yeah, he's been unquote. indoctrinated. <laughs> he's been indoctrinated into this really cumbersome weird way of doing things which hubbard has said look i did all the research this is the only way you do it this is the right way hollywood is stupid they don't know what they're doing yes. and so so now i don't know what to do so uh i called a post-production house that does what what's you know telecine which is where you transfer negative onto video we rushed the film through the lab at great expense i got them to open up at 10 o'clock at night and then I, Norman and I went in there to look at the dailies on video yeah. to see what we had gotten that day. And usually when you do this, the operator who transfers it to film, uh, the film to video, he'll, he'll have these little knobs and he'll correct the timing, what they call the timing. He'll correct it because some of it's going to be too bright, some of it's going to be too dark. So we sat down to look at it and the guy turned to us and he said, I have to tell you, these are the most perfect exposures I've ever seen. I never had to turn the daub once. So <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was just like, so then I had to go to, to Tom Del Ruth and I had to say, look, when this guy, when our client, because he knew what that meant, yeah. when our client is on the set, can you just pick your light meter up, look at it, look at it a little more, look at the scene, look at your light meter. And I said, because the guy's real nervous. He, <laughs> he thinks he knows how to do this. And it's just, he's the guy writing the check. I had to explain this whole thing. Yeah. So to me, that it's such a perfect story of how uh, the indoctrination works. Oh, it, it, it totally is. And, and also, Norman probably was around L. Ron Hubbard more than any other person that was around. Oh yeah, he was yeah, he was his, his ship captain on, on the ship. Yeah. yeah a lot. So he, yeah. And and so he was very loyal to Hubbard. So he would it seems like something that he would do, you know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hey, look, well, should we do some questions? Love, lo, yeah, yeah. Love food, food kitchen. I just have to say, love he's so kitchen. thorough. Yeah. He put up a comment about the SEI meter, which yes. I find fascinating. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You want to read it? Yeah, it said Love Food Kitchen says the SEI meter is a British invention, seemingly uh, Salford electrical instruments in Manchester. There's a couple of ancient ones on eBay. Interesting. Well. Oh. Osa, this. quick, get a note to gold. Yeah, no, the, no a couple of SCI meters escaped. <laughs> yeah. But even yeah, they don't yeah, have <laughs> even even because they bought the whole company and all the spare when parts it went out of business. They bought yeah. every single one they had and every yeah. single part because this thing is like a, it's kind of like a periscope. That's what it kind of yeah. looks like, like it's, an it's upside tubular. down periscope. It's about it's about the size of two thirds. I want to say two thirds of a roll of paper towels. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just like the tube. roll part, not the paper towel part. Yeah, I have to put my headphones on because my yeah. earbuds just went dead. But I'm, yeah. I'm, look, I'm already. Okay. Just give me a second. Give me. Okay. Whoa, well, I'm all Mitch tangled does up. that, I'm gonna pull up there some comments here. He's got a switch. switch. Yeah, I gotta get some wired earbuds like you. Yeah, Mark. see, because now when I talk, talk it's going out of speaker. So. It, then he's good. Yeah. No, you it's good? good. It's not coming out on my computer. Perfect. Anymore. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, I do have to say that up at Gold, oh, as years went by, and the guys, well, part of it was they worked with me, and part of it was they just read like issues of the you know American Cinematographer magazine. Yeah. You know, they they met some directors of photography. After a while, they all started just 
not using the SCI meter. Yes. You know, unless, you know, Miscavige or somebody would come around. Then they'd pull it out and go, oh, this totally. is how Hubbard did it. Yeah. So anyway, it's pretty crazy. Okay, let's do some. It says, uh, any comment on oh, Scientology so, uh, audit? Um, that's the guy now that's... I'm not hearing you. Hold on. Oh. Well, it's something that you did. It's something that he did on his end because we were just working fine. And um, I'm going to keep just I'm going to keep talking. Um, if that's the guy that is down on Hollywood Boulevard, we were talking about that earlier in the video on the uh, test center stuff. Um, the only thing that I'd uh, say to him is to be careful um, with all of the spy files videos, or the spy files that I have read, all these internal OSA documents, um, they don't play nice with protesters and they don't play nice with people <laughs> that sort of come after them. So if I would say, and also they, they will 100% uh, continue to poke and prod until they find something that's going to try to set that person off so that they can be involved in some sort of assault or they can frame it that way. Luckily, these guys are filming every single thing that happens. So usually if they try to do that, they're going to catch it. They're going to get it on video and someone's going to get in trouble from the Scientology end. But if you look through any of the videos, um, historical videos of Scientology with protesters, back to the Mark Bunker days at the Lisa McPherson Trust and Hollywood pickets with Mark Bunker, if you go back in time and watch these videos, the Scientologists are getting in the protesters' faces and they're trying to upset them so that they will lash out and become violent. So um, I've never really been big in the protest. I've been to protest when Anonymous were having them. Yeah, wait a minute, Mark. I had video of you from the LA protest that I think I cut some video of you into a, into a, 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 a Oh yeah, These the truth we comes working. out. Over yeah, no, here. you you were definitely at the LA one. Well, yeah, I, when, you weren't going out of your way to like fly around the world and go to protests and shit. But yeah, when they were in LA and I lived in Los Angeles, I was attending the protests. Yeah, because I, I even saw, wore my uh, guy yeah, your Fox mask. mask and the whole thing. Yeah, and they thought that was a big deal. Hey, look, we got Mark. We got Mark Headley. Headley yeah. was there. Headley was there. Like, so what? I bought a mask off of Amazon and went to a protest. Yeah, but you know, but just to verify, because I was on the other side of that, like yeah. helping to push back and just to verify what mark's saying there was this one guy like anonymous drove yeah like it like today with the TikTok uh, crew they have this guy anthony what was his name his name is uh, anthony what is his name which one the main know. guy the main the streets streets what's his name i forget Will, I, the I, guy I, now william, william. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 they got william i mean this is really brave these kids aren't wearing masks they, they have the most powerful tool in the world, which is a, a cell phone with a camera. But, you know, yeah. and it's great that they're not, that they're not trying to hide and say, oh, we're anonymous. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, but it drives the church crazy because there's no organization. They need their enemies to be yes. well-organized plots against Scientology. Yeah. They can't handle that it's just the citizenry rising up and saying, no, you guys are abnormally bad and we're going to shut you down. But I can tell you, like, back the the event you attended the anonymous yeah. one because i saw the video mark we're talking so, about and we're talking about 2007 2000 it broke out in 2008 yeah right that's when the whole when the, when that s hit that fan yeah. but so anyway there was this one they were always trying to find a leader like yes. that way they had to find their guy yeah. and so they came up with this one guy who it turned out had been a, a production manager in the adult film industry like who cares, right? Yeah. And and so and they really the leader of a not. They thought they, this guy was going to be well. He was of kind of a local organizer, and he was. A, oh, see, but, this is news to me. Well, yeah, but I have all this intel because I was on the inside <laughs> of the meetings and shit. So this guy was like, "Oh, we really got this guy because he's like he was a production manager for adult films, right?" Yeah. And uh, but he was kind of a little bit unhinged kind of person. Uh, he had oh. a blog. And also right. the way they present. Oh yeah, so you knew about this guy on that side. Yeah, I knew about him. Yeah, I, I read the intel because they had PIs yeah. on all these people, and then what they would do is because they're so tight with the cops, they yeah. would make up some shit about one of these people, 
and then so then the cops had an excuse to go over and say take off your mask show us your id and then that's how they would try to get their names yeah or they would find they would let the cops know we know who this person is and they have a record or they have yeah this yeah or... so this guy the, this mr porn guy right the production manager yeah he he had posted on a personal blog he was into guns and kind of wacky stuff but whatever nothing illegal but yeah. he had posted a picture of this gun that he just bought a yeah. pistol Call a handgun a pew pew if you want a pew pew yeah this pew pew yeah okay yeah. He, he yeah i guess is that a bad word too gun the p word uh, that the guy worked at the g word. yeah i get yeah. it so i can't pew say pew. metaphorically i came out with both pew pew pews blazing <laughs> i have to say that so he had this pretty gnarly pew pew right <laughs> yeah. and uh like this was a real alley sweeper kind of a pew pew okay right and uh <laughs> alley and he, sweeper yeah I've it was like an it. alley sweeper and so he he like posted a picture of it yeah and so then somebody at osa took it to the cops and said oh. this guy posted a picture of a weapon and he's a danger blah 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 yeah and boom, they arrest. They not only took, you know, got his ID. They not only did a stop with the guy. They arrested him, put him in handcuffs, took him in jail. He got out the next day because it was just like, yeah, it was nonsense. Yeah, it was just influ They were being influenced by. And they also might have dropped the uh, charges afterwards, or they. But they don't. You don't ever see any of that. They no, will nothing video, ever happened with it. But they tortured be, this guy, and this yeah. guy ended up unaliving himself. And they said, "Oh, we had nothing to do with it." But I yeah. think that they like. Anyway, Push this so guy that's over the what edge. I would say. I, I'm not going to, um, uh, you know, this, there's some things I can't say about um, this subject of the Scientology Hollywood stuff. Um, but I would encourage um, to be um, very respectful and to be careful because they um, also they try to infiltrate when those guys are down there, people mm -hmm. are going to come and be like, yeah, man, I love what you're doing. And one of those or multiple of those people are going to be Scientology agents that are going to try to get in with that yeah. guy. And they're going to try to become his friend and know when he's going to come and who he talks to and who edits his videos and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, he's yeah, doing I mean... mostly lives, so I don't think they're going to get a lot of intel. And he seems to be pretty hip and also the chat is hip so like even when somebody is just hanging out near one of those videos the chat's going crazy with oh wh wh who's this guy and what's this person and and some people are frequent flyers in these videos and some people are just randos so just be careful that's yeah, but scientology they're, they're doing, doesn't yeah. when i get to doing these videos about what Scientology has done to some of these protesters and people that are exposing them. Yeah. You'll definitely get a greater respect for the people that are exposing Scientology because Scientology, they don't do much besides write all kinds of stuff back to each other. But when they get to doing stuff, it's dastardly stuff. So. Yeah. And because the, they have, they, they have layers of uh, uh, private investigators that are nasty people like fixers and private like people that you know they don't even know who they're working for that will go and do these kind of things it's it's yeah this is funny though um love food kitchen the, definitely a frequent flyer love food kitchen because there is i got served when i was in burbank with a lawsuit um that was for a guy named mark headley but it wasn't me it was a guy who has the exact same name he just spells it with a k um, and he is an adult <laughs> film producer and the, I want to say that the productions that were suing him or s the people that were suing him, um, also the, um, alleged other defendants were bikini babe, ba Biki vampire beach with the bikini babes and some other movie with I a very missed that similar. One. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, as soon as I saw bikini babes on vampire beach, I was pretty much like, this might be another guy. I'm, I'm, I don't, I have not heard of this production. So thank you, Love Food Kitchen. It, and I don't yeah, think I, it, this it other guy wasn't it, that. No, guy. his name wasn't Headley. Yeah, no. Because we would have, we would have gone to town with that. that oh yeah, if they also knew about me and this other guy that we, we he was my doppelganger in name only. Yeah, then, if, uh, if you want to hear the whole story from the inside of Anonymous, <laughs> read my book because I I have a whole chapter devoted to called uh, the Internet Breaks Scientology. And it's it's all the view from the inside while that was going on. Nice. There's a link to Mitch's new book hey, in the description, thanks. and there it is thanks. right there. Um, um, okay, back to comments. 
Uh, first time catching a BFG live from the start. Sweet. Yes, we did it earlier today so that uh, people in uh, in other countries could tune in. We yeah, I have, get... I have a, there's a lot of people in Germany. I, apparently, I have a, because I did some TV in Germany and I, I've been getting requests to stream a little earlier. They really like us in Germany, Mark. Okay. Like they hate Scientology. They're, they're obsessed like they were with David Hasselhoff. They nice. hate Scientology like they love David Hasselhoff. It's not, you know, they don't like fascism there. They, they've had their, they're done with fascism in Germany. So, you know, and they, yeah. they recognize that Scientology is a fascist organization. Absolutely. Love Food Kitchen again. I'd be fascinated to know how many of Hubbard's fiction books this literary agency actually sells to the public be they Scientologists or not in 2024. Um, they actually go to these, um, the these big conventions, book fairs. big book yeah, fairs. Yeah. And I think the main place that they're selling these are in foreign countries where people don't know about Scientologists. That's where they're able to sell. They're translating these things and they're producing these <sighs> fiction books in multiple languages as well as audio books. And it's sort of a way for them to get people into Scientology. I don't think they get that many in. Through yeah, fiction. no, it's a big deal. And then they have John Goodman and what's his wife's name? John Goodman is the main guy. You know, John, he's a... Uh, I know who John Goodman is. I didn't know he was in ASI stuff. Oh, him, him and his wife. They're like the main... What is her name? Oh. Oh my goodness, Mitch! John Goodwin. 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 Sorry, John Goodman. John Goodman. Yeah, he's is a, is a he very was the, he was amazing the actor. actor in yeah, Big Lebowski. He, That's yeah. not, he's not in Scientology. He has nothing John to do with them. John Goodwin. Sorry, guys. <laughs> John Goodwin. I have early onset Alzheimer's, so like, give me a break. His okay. wife's name is Emily Goodwin. Emily. Uh, yeah, I, Emily Jones um, of Phil Jones and Willie Jones's daughter. And um, and her brother is also still in the Sea Organization. He used to be a security guard, I think. Right. But I think he's also still in the. Um, I don't remember the um, the son's name now. It's escaping. Right. Me. But he's a big mucky muck at ASI. He's he and Emily are the ones. And they remember, do the none of these guys. They don't wear Sea Org uniforms. They stay in nice hotels. They have expense accounts. They the church yeah. the organization buys them expensive clothes. Uh, yeah, and so they live this kind of very secular life. It's they're kind of like in communist China. You have these like rich businessmen who yeah. are rich off of capitalism, but at any second they could be thrown into a labor camp. Yeah. You so could also just not be an ASI anymore and you could then be in one of the other Sea Org units and that's a that would be a culture shock for these Oh guys. my god, that would be horrible. Okay. I mean, you, I worked there every day for like a year and a half, ate, ate with the crew, and yeah. and it was just like a big happy family. It's not like a Sea Org base at all. Did they have better food at ASI? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Oh yeah, did. and then sometimes if Miscavige has a really good mood, like he'd send me and maybe someone else, you know, to, uh, to Katsuya, a restaurant down the street, and we'd have like a twelve hundred dollars sushi dinner. Or oh my god! Some, yeah, woe is yes, me like over here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, don't worry. I, I'm being paid back, man. I'm like almost homeless. So <laughs> Barb worth Trees. It. Question. This is a perfect comment. Question. Did anyone ever leave Scientology just to make some money? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. Well, I guess, um, I mean, in the Sea Organization, at a certain point, when you're doing all this work for, you're basically working for free. Um, if you leave and you just work, just a regular day, um, you're going to be the best employee at that place if you know how to do the job you're doing because you're going to be working the whole time you're working. In the Sea Organization, it's actually right. illegal to be doing something else when you're supposed to be working. Like you can get in big trouble for oh, yeah. messing around during the work hours. So Absolutely. Sea Org members are programmed to work. <laughs> Even these ASI, ASI guys, they're still working Sea Org hours, right? Right. So they weren't, uh, they just got paid minimum wage for it, basically. Kaz Ferns, question, when did the Screen Actors Guild building get take over bought by uh, COS? I don't know. They worked, at, it must have been, because I remember Shauna, remember Shauna Brakefield? Yeah. The Scientologist who worked, she's no she longer She was the president for a while. Well, no, she, she, was, a, she was a head of uh, their indie department. She oh. was the one who testified on behalf of Paul Haggis. She was the one that Tommy Davis went to and said, 
you need to rifle through Paul's through the files and see if you can through find his them. SAG files, Screen Actor yeah. Guild files. Yeah, to see if any actors ever filed like sexual assault SA complaints against Paul. Yeah, she actually testified to that. She uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, going, this is going a great on. question, Rose Bud, A M E. If that's but what, but, but just just Rose to finish the, my thought on that. Yeah. So that was sometime in the midnight. In the mid 90s oh, when the building was bought yeah i think it was sometime uh in the mid to late 90s when mm. they bought the building you're talking about the asi building yeah no the sag building the one that oh the, the one next the door to ASI. yeah yes that was that was purchased in the late 90s mm -hmm. or the or, no in the, it was in the mid 90s when it was purchased yeah oh your bts are back oh good um yeah that's because we're talking about asi so that is weird that every time we talk about that, that happens. I know. Every time we talk about one of Miscavige's uh, locations. Okay, Rud, Rosebud AME. Is, I'm going to say that's it. R r r yeah, who knows? Question, any underground tunnels connecting the buildings? That is a great question. There yeah. are underground tunnels connecting Yeah, the in the complex there are some, In right? Los Angeles, in those blue buildings that we showed, there is, I wonder if I can show that again. Let me see if I can go there. Let me see if I can pull this up. Sorry, guys, I wasn't pl wasn't planning on this, so I have to see if uh, I don't even know where that tab is anymore. Um, let's see if I can find it here. Um, shoot, can I do it? Can I do it? It doesn't look like it. Between the um, between um, those two, where the complex is, when you're looking at it and you see that Scientology sign. Right, right between that building and the building across the street, which is the Advanced Organization of Los Angeles, there are tunnels that go from below the Advanced Organization and they go all the way over to the other organization. And they used to, because these this whole, that whole entire place used to be a hospital complex. So they would have um, tunnels that lead from one building you could, yeah. and, and they had a, a gurney could go through them. You could go down a, a giant elevator in one building, go down to the basement, go through the tunnels and come up in the other building. So right. Um, right. when I was in the Sea Org in Los Angeles, we did, those tunnels were not uh, used regularly because they were very, very nasty down there. Yeah, it was just kind of electrical stuff and old storage. Yeah, pipes and utilities, HVAC, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, Japan of Green Gables question. When you were still in the church, did you convince yourself that Thank You for Listening was a good song and that Hubbard had the voice of an angel? Somebody asked us the same question. <laughs> yeah. Yes, was it yeah, yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, when I was talking oh, to no. Jeff. It was in another video. It was a video you guys were doing. Yeah, with I was talking to Jeff. Yeah. So Japan of Green Gables, you need to like <laughs> we're gonna answer this once and for all. The answer is no. We all thought it was like our our sort of dumbass uncle who we all sort of let him sing at Christmas because, you know, it was the right thing to do. They also boomed the hell they processed the hell out yeah. of that sound of that recording. Yeah. To make L. Ron Hubbard sound like this very it was, the song was like, yeah. thank you for listening. It was yeah, exactly. so, so exactly. bass heavy that it was unnaturally bass heavy. Um, no, it was just a weird. It was like he recorded this. And also, L. Ron Hubbard, let's not forget this video that we covered today. L. Ron Hubbard wrote these. He wrote these things in the 80s or no. Yeah, right. in the 80s. He wrote yeah, all of probably. this. He wrote all the Mission Earth things and he wrote the songs and right. he wrote. There's another album for Battlefield Earth that he wrote oh. called Space Jazz. Oh. And Chick Corea did that album. Holy moly. There's no music videos for that, I don't think. But that music is... <laughs> we might have to cover that. Whoa, we hey, might have to get a hold of the Apollo Stars uh, uh, video of album. And that thing is a train wreck of music and recording, yeah. audio recording. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see this note here from Japan at Green Gables? By the way, Japan at Green Gables, you're elected to be on my film trivia team because this yeah. is, <laughs> it says, whoa. One of the whoa, actors for Vampire in Bikini Beach was also in Deep Impact. Whoa. <laughs> that's, that's some is heavy it really? Trivia. You know what? If it's, if it's really called Vampire in Bikini Beach, I was just, I don't remember exactly. I think but there's if it, supposed to be a like a joke like deep impact you know da, 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 da. Oh. i don't know i can't tell it's too subtle okay. maybe that's we'll get some true, clarification though. that's true though. 
<laughs> Good point. <laughs> Duchess Diana, question, is that music from the person associated with White Knights? Sounds like a Barishnikov and Heinz rehearsal scene. Yeah. No, but you know what's funny is that around the same time period in the 1980s, Scientology was really, really trying to get like Sylvester Stallone because they had Frank Stallone and Frank Stallone was kind of Scientology adjacent. Yeah. I don't ever remember him. And doing... they had this kid, Mark Leif, what was it, Leif Erickson? No, Leif Garrett. Le Leif Garrett, Leif Erickson. Very. I'm, like with, I'm so bad with You names. are the worst. When you said John Goodman, I, I literally, I was like having a mini stroke. Like, well, hold on a second. <laughs> There's no way John Goodman was no, in Scientology. No. I was like losing my no. mind. Like, please don't say that. No, I nobody like in John the Big Goodman. Lebowski is ever going to go near <laughs> I Scientology. I was like, no way. Goodwin, Goodwin. <laughs> Goodwin. Um, anyway, yes, here we go. Speaking of Edgar Winter, I still have the album Autumn, one of my favorite songs ever. Never knew he was a Scientologist. He didn't go very high up. He, he didn't. didn't do a and lot. And also, was... <clears throat> I don't remember. I think his wife's name was Monique. Yeah, that's right, Monique. Monique. She was the, the driver and she was driving that cart. I was going to say she was yeah. his handler and she yeah. was the one who made sure that Edgar wasn't getting messed with. She was the one she was, I've never seen Edgar without her. I've yeah, never no, once right. seen him at gold right. or at right. an event or anything. And well, he kind of, because of his condition, he kind of needed a caretaker to well, be yeah, with him. He was and, legally blind. Yeah. And he, she, she was like his caretaker. He might've been, yeah, he wasn't like Stevie Wonder, but I don't even there's there's don't get into the conspiracies on that. But either way, um, I I know I did a bunch of work for Ray Charles, the Ray Charles uh, uh, Library. We built a whole museum for Ray Charles, right. and the people that that run that are they uh, they used to work for Ray Charles, right? And so they told us all kinds of crazy stories about Ray and Stevie, and um, what anyway. that they weren't really blind? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no Just I'm fun sure. stories between the, what Stevie would share with Ray and stuff like that. But yeah. there's also Boy, I even would... in that community, there is sort of like, well, yeah, Ray was Ray blind. He wasn't Stevie. Blind. Yeah, I, those are two guys I would have loved to have hung out with. Oh my God, the stories Ray Charles, amazing people has. To this day, in his collection, in his in his memorial um, library, he had every single copy of Playboy in Braille, every single edition, every single wow. issue in Braille. And he would joke, and he would he would show people, and he'd be like, "I really do read them for the interviews." <laughs> <laughs> That's anyway, great. they're all white. It's amazing. Anyway, fun stories. Okay, um, I think uh, Japan of Green Gables. I wish that was clever. It really is called Vampire on Bikini Beach, and it really had an actress who was also in Deep nice, Impact. Nice, no, thank you for that. There you go. Thank yeah. you, Japan of Green Gables. Yeah. Um, yes, no, um, Vampire. There you go. V Vampires on Bikini Beach is a real thing, folks. It really happened. Um, and um, yeah, I don't know what else that guy's been. Uh, the producer of, but I'm pretty sure it's a lot of similar things. Um, April in Amsterdam says, Matt Pesh has great stories about the basements, secret rooms, unused areas of the LA properties. His Halloween special video is so creepy. Yeah, because yes. Matt spent a lot of time in the RPF and they were, that was uh, uh, frequented by the RPF. The RPF were not allowed to, they, there was a time period in Los Angeles where the RPF were sort of like unicorns. They were not allowed. No one was allowed to see that there was actually an RPF. So if you weren't in Scientology, you would never see them because they would work in the buildings, but they would never leave the buildings. Right. And eventually they kind of changed their uniforms and changed the way they, they weren't supposed to run everywhere, even right. though Hubbard said they were, they would kind of have to do like a really, like a kind of like a slow jog. <laughs> But um, but they would be wearing all black um, shirts, shorts, and boots, and they would be doing grounds work out. Now, I don't know what they have now. They probably just have a giant grounds department of Sea Org members. Yeah, but, I guess. Um, supposedly all those RPFs have been canceled. But yes, Matt, Matt has endless stories. Yeah, his, I mean, his Halloween story, somebody brought it up. It made me queasy. I mean, he was talking about rats and stuff, oh, and I yeah. was just like, oh. Yeah, no, it was bad news down there. When I tell you we didn't go down there, it's because it was yeah. bad news. Well, I went, I went down there once, uh, in uh, around uh, 1990 when it was really gnarly. 
I used it as a set, right? I put a bunch of smoke in there and a bunch of backlight, and I had somebody like escaping from their own, you know, mental yeah. anguish. Yeah, I whatever. remember we would shoot whenever we wanted like yeah. a like a nightmare scene yeah, or it was like some sort of terror location. scene. Yeah. We would shoot them down yeah. there because yeah. that place is terrifying. <laughs> yeah, you could you could pay a fortune for a location like that in, in Oh, LA. Um, it was amazing when, before it got made nice. It was yeah. amazing as a like that's where also where the morgue was. The morgue right. was in the well, that's where the tunnels and the morgue were all part of the same system. Right. So if you went down there, it was like, well, that's where the morgue used to be and everybody would be like, eh, it's a little, there's something going down. There's some, there's some thetans down there that haven't figured out where they're supposed to go. Right. You know, right. spooky down there. Right. Uh, Lisa Terry says, question, LRH was crazy, but do you think he had a mental illness that can be labeled? Um, well, I, I think I, we all have a mental illness that can be labeled, but well, that doesn't mean that we're destructive cult, cult leaders. Um, yeah, he... he yeah, yeah I he's, think he's like next level sociopathic, narcissistic personality disorder. Like he's the entire cluster B package and then a few other things, you know. Well, he, at the end of his days, I mean, this is documented. There was a guy named Sarge that used to kind of was one of his caretakers right before he passed away uh, when he was at that ranch in Creston. And Sarge tells a story about how L. Ron Hubbard was trying to get rid of these body thetans, even after he had done all these operating thetan levels. When he was working on OT9, which he never did or finished, he was trying, still trying to electrocute, like he was trying to get this guy Sarge to get a whole bunch of car batteries wired up to an e-meter so L. Ron Hubbard could find the body thetans and then electric and then have like a button. He could go like, okay, I gotcha, like Ghostbusters and just go <laughs> and zap them. Tell them this is not a joke. This is serious. Ectoplasm. So whatever, whatever mental illness that is, that's, yeah, that's what pretty had. insane. But, but again, you know, he might be crazy, but he wasn't stupid. So I'm thinking maybe that's the secret to getting rid of the BTs in your audio system. Maybe you need to ho hook up a bunch of car batteries and, you know. Or maybe I just need to hire the Ghostbusters. Uh, just zap your mic when it happens. <laughs> I'm not hooking up car batteries. I'm going to farm that out to the Ghostbusters. <laughs> oh, I yeah, have to do okay. that. <laughs> okay. You who are you, who are you I have to... a firm be belief, and I, and I operate this way in life. Yep. If you need something done, you should call the people that do that thing. Like, yeah. if you need some plumbing work done, I'm not going to get a pipe wrench. No. I'm going to get a plumber. So if I've got legit BTs in here and they're messing up this, then the Ghostbusters. Call Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Because you end up getting a, ran a wrench, you break something, then you're spending like 10 trips to Home Depot yeah. to try to figure out the right part to get. It's a mess. Exactly. You're yes. going back and forth to homies. The same thing could happen. I'm trying to catch this BT, but then instead I yeah. zap a good BT, yeah. turn him bad. He teams up with the audio BTs. Next thing you know, I got video BTs. Yeah, you exactly. know, that's not a good path. We don't want that. <laughs> hey, Mark, I have one photograph. Maybe this will be the last photograph that okay. I just remembered I had. Yeah. Put that up. Okay, so because we were talking about the location of David Miscavige and so forth, yeah, this is this was sent to me by my friend Rachel Hastings. I've shown nice. this photo before. I know exactly what this is. Rachel was attending a drag queen event, a, 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 like a gay pride event, across the street from Scientology Media Productions. She walked out on the sidewalk, and now the, she described it. This club was loud. Like you could hear the music coming out of there for a block. She walked out of there. She sent me this picture. She circled Dave's office and she said, hey, Mitch, look, the lights are on. Dave's like hearing this gay pride event. Yeah. You know, that's in, a great thing. That is. In his office. Yeah. So FBI, LAPD, whoever, that's where he's at. That's yeah, it right that's there. That's his office right there. X marks the spot. Yeah. That's where little David Yeah, so you can at. go you can go stand in front of this gay bar in, in East Hollywood, uh, where the people are really nice and welcoming. You can stand there and then spy across the street and, and line and, his frame up. And, and see you right will into have, Dave's yeah, office. Yeah, the X yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> that's where he's hanging out. That's a good one. Oh my god, here we go. This is a perfect quote. My Scientology friend was working at Scientology Media Productions five years ago, and he hated it. Who was that? Boy, would I like to know. I don't know, Mr. Knifehart. Give us a ring. I know. And let yeah. us know who that is. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah, have him, have we'll him send me got... an email and, uh, we'll talk. Cause I was there five years ago. 
Wow, that's true, right? That you really were there five years ago, so you might yeah. even know this person. Yeah, was um, yeah, was. Mr. Neifart, uh, give us a shout out, whatever. Um, I think that's going to do it. I think we got uh, every single. Uh, the, somebody's in the Claire's in the back. She's she's um, star and stuff, and she yeah. I think all we ones. milked this cow, Mark. I think this we cow did. is like needs needs a break. <laughs> Cry out crying out we're crying out here yeah. um we will if we're gonna do um we're gonna finish all the scientology films that we got to do but if there's other videos other music videos um did you shoot the we stand tall video the the the, the bad sweater video yeah no that yeah. was done right before i got there okay so we stand tall that was, was the reason why the shoot crew got got sent into the the galley remember they were locked up in the galley they weren't allowed to go near their equipment until I came up there. Yeah, but I'm just saying. So this we was we stand we stand tall came out in '88, I think. Yeah, I, I didn't get there till. Not, okay, good. Till the so same we year stand tall was their I think their first music official music video, but yeah. that never aired on MTV. No, it was for an event. That was just internal. Yeah, it, it wasn't really a music video. We did a lot of these. They were we remember Mark. We called them song videos. That's right. We called they them were song, song videos. We weren't videos. allowed to call them music videos. Yeah, because that sounded too much like we were trying to be like cool. Yeah. And so, so we they were all because they were video. all based on L. Ron Hubbard's songs. That's right. And the first one I did was called for We Are the Auditors. We are the auditors. Yeah, and then it created a visual style that they still copy to this day. Yeah. It created like an indel indelible visual style where you use lots of smoke and you had backlight beams and people walking towards cameras. I was going to say, if we get up, if we find another music video that's out uh -oh. there and Mitch did it, you're going to see some clouds. You're going to see oh, some yeah. sprinklers. Oh, yeah, and backlit smoke. You're going to see smoke, smoke with beams. <laughs> We're going to be you're... Piss Alley downtown. There's going to be a Piss Alley shot yeah, downtown gonna, LA. There's going to be somebody, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, there there's some first thing. street bridge. It's going to be yeah. some bridge shots. <laughs> well, they they, I, they tore that bridge down. There's now a new bridge. So I know, but we shot it. We shot oh the hell God. out of that bridge. We shot everywhere down there. Yeah. Okay, guys, this was fun. Um, thanks for tuning in here. Let's do uh, let's do our little stuff. You've got um, we showed this already, but and, th and these links are also in the description in case you guys uh, can't. Yeah, uh, it's available at Amazon. It's also type. available at uh, B Dalton Booksellers. Okay. I'm sorry, oh, Barnes and Noble. What I'm am I sorry. saying? Barnes and Noble. I, I just I just got it on there. Uh, you can also order from Barnes and Noble if you really want a nice hardcover with a dust jacket. Order it from Barnes and Noble because the, the the outfit that distributes to Barnes and Noble does much better printing than Amazon. Oh, there uh, you go. Okay, good. And you can also go to Mitch's site and you can get all his stuff. You can go to his, if you're watching on my channel, you can go to Mitch's channel and you can subscribe and like over there. That'll help Mitch out. Yeah. Thank um, you for doing that. If you have done so. Yeah. And if you're on Mitch's part, channel watching and come over to my channel and do the yeah, same. Yeah, exactly. I, um, I have about 4,500 very smart, very loyal people. Well, hey, it's all good. Apparently well, there's, that's all there are. No, I shouldn't say that. Yeah, no, that you, you just act like you have a big channel, and pretty soon you have a big channel. Yeah, um, exactly. Zeno is my homeboy, and tons of other amazing BFG merch can be gotten from the Blown for Good store, and you can go to the link in the description for that, or you can just go to blownforgood.com, and you can get to it from there as well. And then we also have fake Navy Davy dolls, bobbleheads, and SP bracelets can be gotten at the spshop.com, and all the proceeds from those go to support the Aftermath Foundation. If you don't want any of that nonsense and you just want to support the Aftermath Foundation, you can go to theaftermathfoundation.org and you can also sign up to be a volunteer or donate your services or whatever else you can uh, offer up to support people that we're trying to help get out of Scientology. I think that's it. I think that Yeah, you us. know, I have one last question for you, Mark. Yeah. When I see the protests at the test center, Yeah. and like I... I helped set that place up, like the design in there, of yeah. all the videos and everything. Like that was my project. Like even the books in the windows, you know, on one side, the, it's just one book on one side, all in different languages, and on the other side, is another book all in different languages, right? And because they used yeah. to just have a mishmash of books, so I, I had I had all kinds of history with that, and I just like I don't want to go. I'm trying to figure out what to do because I feel like I should do something. But yeah, I, I don't want to take anything away from what those guys are doing. Because you know, I think it's organic right now. I think yeah, the just people that are alone. there are the people that are there, and yeah. if there's supposed to be other people. Those people will show up. I think, you know, I'm the same way. I don't want to. 
tell these people what to do or how to well, do no, it. I don't because mean that. But however I mean, they're doing it is doing. No, no, is no, no I would great. never tell them. I would never tell them what to do. I couldn't tell them what to do. They're brilliant. I was in Scientology. I was a brainwashed cult member. I would yeah. not be able to figure out what to do. These are angry citizens. You yeah. can't tell angry citizens what to do. Yeah, that's why I, I was kind of like, it's a protest. They're protesting. I, they're doing yeah, what they're supposed to do. So, sometimes <laughs> I just want to go down there and talk to some of these stuff and say, you know, I made those videos in there and they're all a bunch of BS <laughs> and they're all propaganda. And That and, would be a great video though, Mitch, if you yeah, went down there and like, said, I made all those videos you want people to watch. They're all bull. Yeah, let me just tell you, and I know what they are. And you think I'm an imposter? Okay, I'm going to tell you the entire... Uh, what's on the menu of that monitor over there? I'm going to list off to you. I'd have to write it down to memorize it. Yeah. I'm going to list off to you what's on the menu on the on the Scientology panel. And, oh, there's the Purif panel. Let me tell you what videos are on there. And, oh, there's the Dianetics panel. Let me tell you what videos are on there. You want to know what? I made all those videos and I did it for money. And they're a bunch of BS. And you're being lied to. Like I just feel like I want to go talk to them and tell them. That. Yeah. But yeah, but I, there's I been know. a lot of people that have been commenting on on my channel, and I've seen it on other channels. Like, what do you think about this? I'm like, anything that exposes Scientology as a fraud and exposes. Oh the no, con I, I and, think it's the best thing that ever happened. Yeah. You know, you're an angry ex apostate. You're a thief and a liar and a bad person. Same with me. I was a nobody. You know, this I'm, I'm referring to the stuff that they say. Yeah. Right. What are they going to say about these guys? They can only say one thing: uh, they're anti-religious bigots. Yeah. That means nothing to the public. Yeah, and some so, people that used to be a bad thing. Now some people are like, "That's a good thing." Yeah, yeah. They're like, because I want to have a drink with that guy. <laughs> yeah, they know it's just name calling. So these guys, they are literally rendering the Church of Scientology you know, so their tactics powerless. I mean, we even heard uh, what's his name, uh, uh, William, right? William. Yeah. I gotta remember this guy's name. I'm so bad with names. You know, we even saw him cheerleading, saying, "Look." Do not interface. Do not in react to these people. Don't give them anything. That, yeah, they like went he, really hard on him real quick. Like when yeah, they started talking about his kid and stuff like that. And then I was like, that's when I was like, okay, yeah. Now see, now they're pulling out. Now they're going to start playing dirty. Yeah, and yeah. that's and if another person shows up, that's you know, like don't go into it lightly. If you go there and you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna throw down and shoot videos and do stuff they're likely going to get up in your business. So that's the only yeah. thing I'd say. Just, yeah. just be careful. Just be respectful. Don't break yeah. any laws. You'll be fine. Video everything. And yeah. have. I personally would never go there by myself. If I was going there, well, I would always make sure someone else is also videoing. Yeah, because that, that's you know, you're, how... You're particularly... But I, I know mean, that they... Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, they do. They will. They will blur the lines between legal and illegal, and they have all the money and time and power to kind of milk that and let. Well, it. you know, the Mormons call it lying for Jesus. You know, if if it's it's for it's for the sake of maintaining the safety and security of your religion, it's okay to do, and that is their attitude. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to keep my honor. I love that it's happening. I think these people are amazing. It's like finally the citizens are rising up and they're picking up pitchforks and torches. But they're also making it cool to go down there and just go yeah. say hi and just yeah. give them a shout out and be like, yo, dude, I love yeah. I watch your videos. Yeah, and nobody's hiding day. behind a mask. Yeah, just you know, a bunch of kids. And also, that's the other thing. What are they going to do? It's a bunch of TikTokers. I don't know how yeah. Scientology yeah. keeps you. Th when the Anonymous came, it was like, this is a new thing because now you don't have people that are part of an organization. They're just individuals, but right. you don't know who they are. So they have to do all this work to find out who they are. Right. Now you have people, it's like, we don't even care if you know who I am. Yeah, exactly. And then they're like, well, now what do we do? Now they don't right. even care that we know who they are. Yeah, so. and they're, they're going to do like they did with Anonymous. They'll do, you know, they'll plant white powder in one of their orgs and say, you know, anthrax scare, and they're a bunch of terrorists, yeah. that they'll try to do this stuff. But I, I, I think William is smart enough that he's going to keep keep these guys. He's yeah. kind of like a... He's like a like a scoutmaster. I mean, he's like awesome. He's so yeah. Done. But Scientology, they're not gonna be cool and calculated necessarily. They're gonna do stupid and silly things that you wouldn't think they're gonna do that are illogical, and that's just how they operate. So I'm not right. right. I'm not sure how this is gonna end up, but if it gets to be a thing where you know, oh, there's a place in Portland, the Portland TikTokers can go to. And if yeah, there's a exactly. place in, in Chicago that the Chicago TikTokers, like if, if it gets to be a thing where if you're a TikToker and the cool thing is that could be the new TikTok challenge is to go right. to a Scientology right, right. place, that's, that's fine with me. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's good.
Anyway, thanks, well, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Mitch, for doing yeah, this. Hey, Mark, this was great. We'll do something soon. Yes, we're going to uh, do another uh, Scientology film. And I have a special guest that agreed <gasps> to do a film. So I will oh, tell you after okay. this, Mitch, I will okay, tell great. you who that is. Fantastic. But it's going to be an amazing one. You're going to love yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, good. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys we'll see you next care. time. Have a great day. Till next time.